Okay, so so this evening I am going to discuss uh, the questions uh, related to small changes. Okay, so the formula that you must know in order to answer the questions from this subtopic is delta y over delta x is approximately equals to dy dx and you also can rewrite this formula like this okay delta y approximately equals to dy dx multiply with delta x okay and what is delta x so delta x is actually the small change in x so delta x is equals to the what i call the new value of x minus the initial value of x so this is the new value okay new x and this is the initial value of x okay next the third formula is delta y okay so if delta x is equals to x1 minus x0 so delta y should be y1 minus y0 okay meaning is the new y minus okay the initial value of the y and actually you can rewrite this formula like this meaning we write the new value of y as equals to the initial value of y plus with delta y okay so these are the three formulas that you need to remember in order to answer the questions related to okay uh, small changes so let's start with question number one okay. given that y equals to x square plus 5x use differentiation to find the small change in y okay small change in y small change in y means you need to find what is delta y okay when x increases from 3 to 3.01 okay and from here you can calculate what is delta x so what is delta x delta x is equals to the new value of x which is 3.01 minus with the initial value of x which is 3 so 3.01 minus 3 you will get 0 0.01 okay next if you want to find delta y then you need dy dx and also delta y so we already calculated delta x now we need to calculate what is dy dx okay. so we differentiate okay, x square plus 5x respect to x so when you do that you will get dy dx is equals to 2x plus 5 okay. so we already calculated uh, dy dx so delta y is equals to so even though earlier we used uh, approximately equals to so here we can actually just write equals to eh? okay so delta y is equals to dy dx multiply with delta x okay. so what is dy dx dy dx is 2x plus 5 okay multiply with delta x and the value of delta x is 0 0.01 okay so very important the value of x that you substitute here right is always x naught 
the original value of x. So in this case, what is the original value of x? It's actually 3, yeah? Okay. x naught is actually 3, okay? And normally, this uh, x naught will be, okay, uh, integer, eh? integer or a nice figure, eh? okay, nice figure. So without any decimals, lah, eh? even though it's a decimal, maybe it's just 2.5. It's not like 2.99. Okay, so very, uh, you have to be uh, careful with this. Okay, so don't substitute 3.01. You must substitute 3. Okay, okay now let's uh, solve this. 2 times 3, you get uh, 6, 6 plus 5, 11, 11 times with 0 0.01. The answer is okay, 0. 1 1 okay so I, I hope you get the same answer and okay let me explain a little bit okay uh, this question I mean the solution for this question okay so just imagine you have a curve y equals to x square plus 5x and then this is actually the initial value of x okay so let's say this is 3 yeah? 3 and okay in order to find the y coordinate you can substitute 3 into the uh, the function here so 3 square is actually uh, 9 9 plus with 5 times 3 15 okay, 15 plus with 9 is 24 right 24 eh? So 24, okay. Okay, and then actually we zoom, eh? zoom the graph, and this is actually the the new value of x, which is 3.01. Okay, 3.01. Okay, and then we don't know what is the y value, so just put okay a question mark. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw. A second line okay a second line like this okay 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 at the same time if we draw a tangent line at x equals to 3 okay since the the points are very close the tangent line that you draw right also going to pass through uh, both both of these points okay okay so this is actually the tangent line okay tangent to curve at x equals to 3 okay so even though here uh, it seems like the line is cutting uh, the curve right but if you use the software, okay, like GeoGebra, okay, so you can see that the points are actually very, very close. So when we zoom in, okay, and then we draw a tangent line. So this is the tangent line. So we can see a blue color line, okay. Okay, so the, the line which is tangent to the curve at point A also seems like the tangent line at B, okay? It seems like, eh, it's actually, uh, if you zoom further, there will be a small gap eh, between the blue color line and point B, okay? But from here, what you can see is, uh, both point A and B seems like located on this same straight line, okay? Okay, now. And the next thing is, I'm going to, what do you call? Draw a triangle. Okay, a triangle, right angle triangle like this. Okay. And the distance. Okay, I mean the this horizontal distance can be labeled as delta x. 
whereas the vertical distance here can be labeled as delta y. Okay. So, first of all, this is the tangent line. And you can find the gradient of the tangent line using dy dx. Right. Okay. And at the same time, you can use the concept of the okay uh, gradient. Okay. So gradient also equals to delta y over delta x. That's how you get dy dx equals to delta y over delta x. Okay. So we can find the value of dy dx by calculating uh, what you call the the first derivative of this function, which is okay 2x plus 5, and if you substitute okay uh, 3 as x, the gradient is actually equals to 11. Eh? So we get 11. So 11 is equals to the vertical distance divided by horizontal distance. So what is the vertical distance? The vertical distance is delta y. And the horizontal distance is actually, okay, uh, x1 minus the, uh, x0, okay, where the value is actually 3.01 minus 3, so it's 3, uh, 0.01, okay, and then delta y is 11 times with 0.01, that's how huh? we get 0.11, okay, so I hope uh, you get a, a picture Okay, y, dy dx is actually equals to delta y over delta x. Okay, so we use the concept of the gradient of the tangent line is equals to the gradient of the, the secant line. Eh? But very important, the points that located on the curve must be very, very close. Or in other words, the delta x must be very very small okay so when i say it's very very small normally it will be less than 0 0.1 okay so if the delta x is bigger than 0 0.1 the the value of the delta y that we calculate is not accurate anymore okay so you can try this eh, using the graphs okay let's move to question number two okay uh, it is given that y is equals to 3x squared plus x minus 4 Find the value of uh, dy dx when x is equal to 1. Okay, so we can easily find dy dx. dy dx is equal to 6x plus 1. And then when x is equal to 1, dy dx is equal to 6 times 1 okay, plus 1, which is equal to 7. Okay, next section B. Express the approximate change in y. Meaning, what we need to find here is actually delta y. Eh? Delta y. Okay. In terms of p, when x changes from 1 to 1 plus p, where p is the small value. Okay. So, delta x is actually the new value of x, which is 1 plus p minus 1. So, we get p. Okay, actually, no calculation is required to calculate the delta x. You can st straight away write delta x is equals to p. Okay, so delta y is equals to dy dx multiply with delta x. So what is dy dx? dy dx is actually equals to 7. Right? And you have to be careful with this question. You have to make sure... The value of x is same. Huh? So x is equal to 1. And the initial value of x okay, for section B is also equal to 1. Okay, So I hope you still remember when you calculate the delta, uh, sorry, dy dx here, you must substitute okay, x0, right? So in this case, the x0 is, of course, is equal to 1. Okay? So 7 times with delta, delta x. So the delta x is actually p. So the answer is 7p. Okay. okay, let's move to question number 3. Two variables x and y are related by the equation y equals to 16 over x squared expressed in terms of h, the approximate change in y when x changes from 4 to 4 plus h, where 
h is the small value. So first of all, we can calculate the delta x, right? So delta x is equals to 4 plus h minus, okay, 4. Okay, and the answer is h. Next, we can find the dy dx. But before that, maybe we should rewrite this. y equals to 16x to the power of negative 2. So dy dx is equals to negative 32x to the power of negative 3. And you can write this as negative 32 over x cubed. Okay, next. Delta y. Delta y is equals to dy dx. Multiply with delta x. Okay. Okay, let me copy this formula. Okay. So dy dx is actually equals to negative 32 over x cube and the value of x that you use should substitute here is of course the okay x naught so the x naught is 4 okay so we substitute 4 and multiply with okay, h okay so 4 cube is actually 64 Negative 32 over 64 is negative 1 over 2. So negative 1 over 2 times with h. The answer is negative h over 2. At the same time, you also can write as what you call a negative 0.5 h. Or okay, negative 1 over 2 h. So all these values are accepted. Okay. Okay. So find any questions. Okay. Next, let's proceed to question number 4. It is given that y is equal to 10 minus 12 over x. Find the small change in x in terms of p when the value of y changes from 4 to 4 plus p. Okay. okay so delta y. Okay. How we get delta y? The same formula. Y1 minus y0. So the delta y is actually equal to 4. Okay. So you already able to find delta y next dy dx is equals to okay, 12 over x square okay okay delta y is equals to dy dx times with delta x so what is delta y delta y is p Okay, dy dx is 12 over x square. Okay, and remember the value of x that you should use here is actually x naught. Okay, and multiply with delta x. And actually, we need to find what is the value of delta x. Okay, this is what we need to find here. Delta x is unknown. Okay. But the problem is you are not given the value of delta, uh, sorry, x naught, right? So first you have to find x naught. How to find x naught? Okay, you are already given y naught, right? Y is equals to 10 minus 12 over x. So if you substitute y naught into this formula, you can get the x naught. Okay, so y naught is actually 4. So, 4 is equal to 10 minus 12 over x naught. Okay. So, if you solve this, you will get uh, negative 6 is equal to negative 12 over x naught. And the value of x naught is actually equal to 2. Right. Okay. So, we substitute x naught with 2. Okay. So, 12 divided by 2 square. So, 12 divided by 4, you get. 3 okay so p is equals to 3 times delta x so how about delta x delta x is equals to p over 3 okay done so even though we use the same formula you have to read the question very carefully and identify whether you are given delta y or delta x okay if you are given delta y 
most of the time you have to calculate the delta uh, sorry x naught first okay because in order to find dy dx you need this x naught okay next question number five It is given that L is equals to 40 minus T square and X is equals to 3 plus 60. A express DL over DX in terms of T. So in, the, uh, in this case, you need to use the chain rule that okay, I already teach in the previous class. So first of all, let's find what is D l over dx okay so dl over dx can be expressed as dl okay, over dx okay and here okay if you notice eh, uh, the variables are involved in this formula is l t and x so we already use l and x so the remaining term is actually t so dl dx is actually equals to dl dt times with dt dx. Okay. So l is equals to 40 minus t square. So if you calculate dl dt, you will get 4 minus 2t. Okay, next, how about dx dt? dx dt is actually 6. So let's substitute the information dl dt okay 4 minus 2t times with okay, once again you have to be very careful what we need is dt over dx but what we have calculated is dx over dt so here you have to inverse the 6 so it become 1 over 6 and if you simplify this okay you will get uh, what I call 2 minus t over 3. Okay, we are done with section A. Now let's look at section B. Find the small change in x when L changes from 3 to 3.4 at the instant p is equal to 1. Okay. So we shouldn't make the same mistake. L changes from 3 to 3.4. So this is actually delta L. Delta L is okay, 3.4 minus 3, which is 0 0.4. Okay. And T is equals to 1. So delta L is equals to DL over DX multiplied with okay, delta X, right? So we already have delta L, which is 0 0.4. So 0 0.4 is equal to dL dx. Okay. And the value of T is already given. So T, uh, okay, we substitute here. Okay, 2 minus 1. Okay, dy by okay, 3 times with delta x. So what is delta x? Delta x is equal to? 0 0.4 times with 3 divided by 1. So the answer is 1.2. Okay. So let's move to question number 6. Given that y is equal to 5x square minus 4x plus 3. If x increases 3%. Okay. So this question is slightly different. Because you are given the percentage x x increases three percent, and the value of x initial value of x is two, and you you are required to find the percentage of increase in y. Okay, in terms of the, I mean you need to find the delta y in terms of the percentage. So first of all, we can easily find dy dx. So dy dx is equal to 10x minus 4. Okay, next, the value of x is equal to 2. 
okay and then you are given the the, the increment eh, in terms of the percentage so delta x is it equals to 0 0.03 no okay what is 3% 3% means it's a delta x over x okay times with 100% is actually equals to 3% okay so if you solve this you get delta x is equals to 3% divided by 100% okay you get 0 0.03 multiply with x you get 0 0.03 multiply with x so what is x okay x is actually equals to 2 okay so 0 0.03 times with 2 so the delta x here is 0 0.06 okay and as usual delta y is equals to dy dx multiply with delta y right so dy dx okay, 10 times with okay x naught minus 4 so what is the value of x naught here the x naught is actually 2 multiply with delta x so the delta x is 0 0.06 okay so 2 times uh, 10 you get 20 20 minus with 4 okay we get uh, okay 16 right so 16 times with 0 0.06 okay 16 times with 0 0.06 okay so i get 0 0.96 0 0.96 okay but the question actually asks the percentage okay the exact value of delta y is actually 0 0.96 but the question asks the percentage okay so we use the same formula that we used earlier for delta x if delta x over x times with 100%, you get the percentage of the increment eh, for x. Delta y over y multiply with 100%, you will get the percentage of the change in y. So what is delta y? Delta y is equals to 0.96 dy by what is the initial value of y okay if earlier we use x naught for x so here you have to use y naught so what is the value of y naught okay so you get y naught if you substitute x naught into the function right okay so y naught is equals to five times weight 2 square minus 4 times with 2 plus 3. Okay. So 2 square is 4, 4 times with uh, 5. You get 20. 20 minus 8. Okay. Okay. The 20 minus 8, you get uh, 12. Okay. 12 plus 3, 15. Right. Okay. 15. So delta y over 15. Multiply with, okay, 100%. Okay, sorry. We can. Okay. We can just use this 15. Here. So 15 times with 100%. And if you solve this, okay, 0 0.96 divided by 15 times with 100%. Okay. So the answer is 6.4%. Okay. Done. Okay. So if the question is related with percentage, 
uh, the calculation is quite complicated. Okay. okay. Next. Question number seven. Given that y is equals to 5 minus 3 over x, if y is increases from 4 to 4 with a small value p over 25, in terms of p, the percentage corresponding okay, increase in x. Okay. Okay, now. So first of all, you are given the, the function. Okay, next, y is increases from 4 with a small value, okay, p over 25. So this value here is actually refers to delta y, eh? delta y. Okay, and what you need to find is the percentage, okay, of uh, increase eh? for x. Okay, so let's see how to find this. Uh, so, uh, answer okay first of all delta y is equals to p over 25 okay next we can find dy dx dy dx is equals to okay, 3 over x square okay okay so later we need to uh, substitute x naught right so it's better for us to find the x naught first. Okay, this is actually y naught. Okay, four is equals to five minus three over x naught. Okay. So what is x naught? Okay, x naught is actually uh, three. Okay, so you can uh, solve this. Is in calculator, so x not x not is equals to three. So delta y is equals to dy dx multiply with delta x. Okay, dy dx uh, sorry delta y delta y is equals to p over twenty five is equals to dy dx which is three over x square. And careful, make sure you substitute x naught to so the value of x naught is actually 3 and we multiply this with delta x okay so 3 over 3 square actually you get 1 over 3 so 1 over 3 okay you sh shift the 3 uh, 3 to the left hand side so we can get delta x as 3 p over 25 okay so this is actually the value of okay, delta x okay and in order to find the percentage okay of the increase the formula is delta x over x multiply with 100 percent right and the value of x that you should use here is actually x naught so in this case delta x is 3p over 25 divided by x naught, right? So what is x naught? x naught is actually 3 multiply with 100%. Okay. So we can actually cancel this 3. Okay. Okay. And then what what is left here is p over 25 times with 100. So, 100 divided by 25 is 4. And finally, you can get 4p. Okay. So, 4p, uh, 4p is actually percentage. Eh? Okay. Next, question number 8. Okay. Uh, so, so, actually, you, you should prepare for this type of questions. Eh? Because the new trend is they ask you to give the answer. Uh, in terms of uh, what you call variables, right? Okay, so question number 8. Given that y is equals to cubic root of x, use differentiation to estimate the value of cube root of 1002. Okay. Okay, now. 
this is actually the new value of y okay in order to find the new value of y you need to take the initial value of y and then you have to add with delta y okay so first of all let's find what is delta y okay delta y is equals to dy dx multiplied with delta x okay so here you need the dy dx so since you are given y y is equals to x to power 1 over 3 dy dx is equals to 1 over 3 x to power of negative 2 over 3 okay and if you want you can simplify this or rewrite this like this okay so 1 over 3 okay cube root of x and then we square it okay okay next so what is x this is x right okay but this is not just x this is actually x1 eh? x1 so x1 is 1002 okay so x not as i already explained earlier is a nice what you call number eh? right okay and uh, normally when you use uh, x naught your calculation should be very uh, very easy right so if you use 1002 your calculation will become a little bit complicated so what value is very close to 1002 of course the answer is 1000 right okay so from here you can find what is delta x delta x is actually Two. Okay. Okay. Now, dy dx is one over three. Okay. Cube root. Cube root of what? Cube root of thousand. Thousand. So we substitute thousand here. Okay. And don't forget to square this. Okay. Next multiply this with delta x so what is delta x delta x is actually 2 okay, and this value here is actually x naught okay always remember the value of x that we substitute okay in order to find the dy dx is always x naught okay now cube root of 1000 is 10 right so 10 squ square you get 100 Okay, so 1 over 300 times with 2, you should get 1 over 150. Okay, if you want, you can use the calculator as well. So, we already calculated delta y. Okay, Okay. the next thing is you need the y naught, right? So, what is y naught? If you substitute x naught equals to 1000, you will get the y naught. So, y naught is actually cube root of 1000 which is equals to 10 and finally we can calculate the y1 which is cube root of 1002 okay so cube root of 1002 is actually equals to y0 which is 10 plus with the delta y okay so what is delta y delta y is 1 over 150 so if we solve this you get 10 1 over 150 okay. okay now okay so let's check the answer if i straight away key in cube root of 102 okay i get a 10.00666 right okay so let's key in okay um, then plus with 1 over 150. Okay, and then we convert this into decimals. Okay, so the answer that we get is actually correct to at least four decimal places. Okay, meaning the answer is actually very, very accurate. Okay, 
Next question number nine. Use differentiation. Determine an approximate value for the volume of sphere when its radius is 3.02 centimeter. We need to approximate the volume. Okay, not the change in uh, volume. Eh? We need to approximate the volume. Eh? So meaning, we need to find V1 or the new V, uh, V, eh? Okay, we need to find V1. Okay. When its radius is 3.02. Okay, so what is this? This should be X1. Okay, so if this is X1, what is the value of X0? So you need to uh, take a, a nice value which is close to 3.02. So the nice value which is close to 3.02 across is 3 centimeter. So number one, what is delta x? Delta x is 3.02 minus 3, which is okay, 0 0.02. Okay, okay. Now let's say if the radius is 2.99. Okay, so then the closest value is still equals to 3 centimeter, but the delta x should be 2.99 minus 3. So delta x will be a negative value okay so you cannot uh, ignore the negative sign eh? so the negative uh, sign must be uh, used in the next step okay but in this case you get a positive value because the value of x is actually increased okay okay what is the formula to calculate the volume of sphere the formula is 4 over 3 pi r cube okay and uh, okay so i'm going to replace okay, the r with x okay so you have two options either you can change the r with x or you change the x with r okay so since uh, we are quite uh, familiar with x so i'm going to change this here with x okay? okay now so we find dv dx dv dx is actually 4 over 3 times 3 you get 4 pi x square okay and delta v equals to dv dx so what is dv dx 4 pi x square and the value of x that you should use here must be the x naught so which is equals to 3 and then we multiply this with delta x which is 0 0.02 and if we solve this okay, this is what we'll get okay 4 times with 3 square so i just okay uh, keep aside the pi times with 0 0.02 and I get uh, okay 0 0.72 so the final answer is 0 0.72 pi okay but you cannot stop here because we need to find v1 okay so v1 is actually v naught plus with delta v right so what is v naught okay when you substitute x naught you'll get v naught x naught is equals to 3 centimeter okay so v naught is equals to 4 over 3 pi 3 cube okay and if you solve this you will get 36 pi okay okay so 36 pi plus with 0 0.72 pi and then if you add these two values you get 36.72 pi cube centimeter okay done okay, next question number 10 okay and uh, since the question didn't ask you to give the answer in terms of pi you also can okay convert uh, the whole answer into decimals okay question number 10 given that y is equals to 1 over 2x square 
okay find a the value of dy dx when x is equals to 10 okay so y is equals to okay 1 over 2 x to the power of 92 so dy dx is equals to 1 over 2 times with negative 2 and i get negative 1 and x to the power of negative 2 minus 1 so negative 3 and we can rewrite this as negative 1 over x cubed and when x is equals to 10 dy dx is equals to negative 1 over 10 cube and if you solve this you get negative 1 over 1000 or you also can write this in decimal which is negative 0 0.001 okay so section a is done section b the approximate value of 1 over 2 times 10.5 square okay so you try to relate this with 1 over 2x square okay so everything is same except this one this is 10.5 and this is x okay so meaning this is actually x1 okay so if you substitute x1 into the function, this whole thing, right, is represent y1. Okay. So in order to find y1, you need both y0 and delta y. So let's find y0 first. So how to find y0? If you want to find y naught, you have to use x naught. Okay, use x naught. Okay, so when x naught is equals to 10, okay, why x naught is equals to 10? Because x1 is 10.5, so the closest value, okay, should be 10. Okay, so x naught is 10, y naught is equals to Okay, uh, maybe you might ask why we why we cannot use 11. Yes, you can use 11, but the problem is when you use 11, your calculation will become complicated compared to when you are using 10. Okay, so why not is 1 over 2 times 10 square. So 10 square is 100, 100 times with 2, you get 200. So it's basically 1 over 200. Okay. Okay, next, y1 is equals to, so sorry, before that, let's find what is delta y. Delta y is equals to dy dx, which we already calculated earlier, negative 0 0.001, multiply with delta x. So what is delta x? Delta x is, okay, 0 0.5, okay, 0 0.5. Okay, so if you uh, multiply these two values, you get negative 0 0.000, okay, 5, okay. And the y1, eh? so y1, remember what is y1? y1 is 1 over 2 times 10.5 square, and this is actually equals to, okay, X, uh, what you call y naught, which is 1 over 200, okay, this is actually a 0 0.001, eh? okay, so you add with negative 0 0.0005, okay, of course, you also can give the final answer in decimal or in fraction, okay, so let's take 1 over 200 okay and then add with negative 0 0.0005 okay the answer is 9 over 2000 which is also equivalent to 0 0.0045 okay of course you also can write the answer as what you call in fraction which is 9 over 2000 okay question number 11 the water is poured into 
a container okay after t second the height of the water level is x centimeter given that the height of the water level is increasing at the rate of 1.44 t centimeter per second find the small change in x when the t increases from 4 to 4.1 second okay so this value here is actually related to t okay so from here you can find delta t so what is delta t delta t is 0 0.1 okay find the small change in x so we are required to find what is delta x okay so we try to relate delta x and uh, delta t so it should be like this right delta x equals to dx dt multiply with delta t And what is x? x is actually the height. Okay, so the height of the water level increasing at a rate of 1.44 t. So this value here actually represent dx dt. Okay. So dx dt 1.44 t. So what is the value of t? T must be T naught, right? So what is T naught? T naught is actually 4. Multiply with delta T. Delta T is 0 0.1. Okay, so let's solve this. So even though the question looks like very complicated, but when we understand the question properly, it's not as difficult as what we thought, eh? right? Okay, so if you solve this, you get 0 0.576, okay, centimeter, okay. Okay, question number 12. The height of a cylinder is fixed at 16 centimeter. Find the approximate increase in the total surface area of the cylinder when the radius increase from 4 to 4.02 centimeter. Okay, so we have cylinder. Okay, and let's say this is the radius. Okay, and this is the height. So the height. Is actually uh, fixed okay to 16 centimeter and if you calculate the surface area okay you have uh, two circles one is at the top another one is at the bottom so pi r square times with 2 so it's going to be 2 pi r square plus weight and if you open up the curve part right you will get a rectangle okay so the rectangle okay is actually equals to length right? the area of the rectangle is length times beta uh, the width right so in this case the width is actually equals to 16 and the length is actually same as the circumference of the circle here so the circumference is actually 2 pi r and then we multiply with h so 2 pi 2 pi r times with h okay okay now since the value of h is 16 you can straight away substitute 16 so again 2 pi r square plus 32 pi r okay okay next since you are uh, required to find the increase in the surface area, meaning you need to find what is delta A. Okay, delta A. So delta A okay, is equals to 
d a d r multiply with delta r okay if you don't want to use the r you can replace it with x okay so we find d a d r d a d r is 4 pi r plus with 32 pi okay so 4 pi r plus with 32 pi this is d a d r and the value of r that you should use here is actually r naught so what is r naught r naught is actually equals to 4 okay times with okay delta r so what is delta r delta r is basically 4.02 minus 4 which is 0 0.02 okay we're almost done so 4 times with 4 okay plus with 32 okay so the answer is actually in terms of pi eh? so we get 48 pi 48 pi multiply with 0 0.02 okay so we get 0 0.96 and then you multiply with pi, so the final answer is 0 0.96.